Hey everybody, welcome to another one of Chris's Beer Reviews. Alright, I got a pretty cool beer today. The first time I tried it was in a tall boy, and I did not like it at all. Now, I was fortunate enough to pull it out of the assorted section of LCBO. Therefore, I did not have to purchase a six-pack to get this single beer. It is called... Warsteiner, W-A-R-F, oh, Warsteiner, you know what, That it's not an F, that's an S, I apologize people, W-A-R-S-T-E-I-N-E-R, -E um, this is a 4.8% ABV at 330 milliliters. Another uh, example of the label, uh, you can see right here, Vorsteiner. Now, it is to be considered a premium beer. I will be the judge of that, people. This has been brewed since 1753, so this goes back up into medieval times. <clears throat> it is to be considered a product of Germany. And to be, to be, uh, uh, excuse me, precise, it's from... Warstein, Germany. Now that's Warstein, um, if you want to spell it properly in English. Um, if you go to warsteiner.com, warsteiner.com, then uh, you can actually check out the website. Quality from Germany. And just to let you know, I read something here which was a little bit interested. Naturally brewed according to the German purity law. You can check that out. And this little circle, you may not be able to see like the words or the letters, but that's what it says, people. And now the bottle itself says Aus Deutschland, Aus Deutschland Premium Qualität. Premium Qualität. I'm just trying to, I'm pretty good at like spelling things out in other languages uh, to an extent. Plus, I'm also, you know, like a quarter German, if that makes any difference. Um, I made myself very clear with the last review. I can't stop drinking out of this tulip glass. It just everything tastes so damn good. So, I'll be drinking that shit out of there again. Now, normally I wouldn't be drinking out of a tulip glass uh, unless it is a fruity style beer, a 330 approximation bottle of a of a fruity style beer. But uh. Let's just do it up. Oh, wow. Remember before I was telling you about the gadgets in my freaking... Oh, my God. All right. I almost have no more leverage in this lighter. All right. We do got smoke. You can barely see that. Sorry, people. Just ended up looking like something else. But that's okay, because we're all comfortable with our sexuality here. Right, Viva? <laughs> All right. Now, this is going to determine whether I did not like this beer because of the can or because this beer is gross. So, we got about a one finger head here, maybe a one and a quarter. Let's take a look. One and a quarter. I'd say that. There is like little to zero. Uh, carbonation bubbles in this beer, but the one thing that I can tell you, uh, I like the last beer that I had, last beer of today, um, the previous beer of today, this is going to be my last beer of today, is I can actually see some, uh, some stuff floating around in there, like it's the yeast again. It tastes a little bit skunky, uh, smells a little bit skunky, and extremely wheaty. And the bubbles actually look to be a little bit more creamy and foamy than the, some of the other beers I've been reviewing lately that uh, have proven themselves to be very weak carbonated bubbles uh, that cause imperfections when they uh, evaporate or dissipate. Now uh, we got a very light, wheaty looking color. And the one thing that you can tell, no matter how I run my head through this glass, is that this side is a little bit lighter than this side. Now, I don't know if that's because of the glass. Let's see. Here, I'll, I'll try to... Yeah, see? That's not even because of my light. It's... The beer is funky colored. Uh, it's got multiple colors. <laughs> it is inconsistent in color. All right. 
Cheers, everybody. Welcome to uh, another one of my beer testing beer reviews. Ugh. I don't even have to say anything. That answers my question. Now, I'll tell you why I don't like this beer. It goes down extremely nice and smooth. That's the way that you want this type a beer of this caliber to go down. But the aftertaste, okay, let's put it this way. You drink out of a can or you drink out of a bottle. Apparently, this is supposed to be considered a myth, but a can has a tinny taste to it. Tinny taste to it. Uh, metallic taste to it, if you would say. Um, if you drink out of a bottle, it doesn't necessarily have a bottle taste, but we would like to consider that a natural taste. Now, when you're drinking this beer, I'm drinking it out of a bottle, and I'm still tasting like a tinny, tinny, or metallic flavor, and it is grossing me out. And and to boot, uh, when you take a sip, a lot of people may not point this out. Yeah. <laughs> no charge. Compliments, Joe D. Um, but you actually kind of have like a dry hopped taste to this beer. And you do dabble upon a very crispy flavor. I, I have yet to try a beer that has a crispiness in it that is to my liking, if that makes sense. I'm sure it does. Um, for anybody out there who can come up with a, a beer that has a, a bite to it or a crispiness to it that I can actually enjoy, the challenge is up to you. Uh, this has, you know, respectable amount of head for the type of beer that we're dealing with here. If I could say that anything is premium about this beer, that is how smooth it goes down, and the volume of head for, sorry, uh, the volume of lace uh, for it being a lager. Um, that's about all I can say so far. It's still, I don't know if I mentioned this, but the obvious element of this beer, it, it tastes very wheaty. Um, for all those people that are used to watching my um, stouts or my porter reviews. I'm, I'm definitely, I'm certainly much better at at giving those types of reviews. Uh, I always feel guilty when some of the only things that I can say about a lager is that it's it's wheaty or uh, you know it tastes it tastes and smells skunky. Ugh. Now it didn't appear that this beer had very much carbonation to it, but I don't know if it's the fact that it's a tulip glass or just simply the fact that I'm shaking it, but you can actually develop uh, quite the volume of head in this beer. This is one of those beers where I would also, I actually probably prefer the taste of the head over the beer. Um, I'm probably going to end up giving this a 3.2 out of 5. Sorry, sorry, my apologies. 2.3 out of 5. And now that I'm getting closer to the bottom, it's starting to get even more raunchy. Now, forgive the time. We're getting at nine minutes here. Now I'm going to agree the, uh, read the ingredients. Brewing water. I don't think I've read that in an ingredient before. I don't know what, what's brewing water. Barley malt. Used to it. Hop extract. Used to it. That's it. That's it. I apologize. Thought it was going to be a little bit more exciting than that. Anyways, cheers to uh, lack of ingredients. And uh, I have to say, for a beer with very little ingredients, it definitely has a, a slight characteristic uh, to it that's different from any other beer where I've read the ingredients to the back. And it's literally just said, you know, barley malt and hops. Okay. Abbrevi uh, brief, briefly. Um, that being said, 
the taste that I'm telling you about isn't necessarily a good one. So this is up to you. Um, I accidentally said 3.2 out of 5. I meant to say 2.3 out of 5. But the, uh, I'm getting to the bottom and the taste is starting to get even worse. So I might end up giving it a 2.1 or a 2.2. You know what? I'm giving it a 2.1 out of 5. Alright everybody, thanks for joining me in another one of Chris's beer reviews. Forgive me for not showering and shaving and all that jazz. Just woke up, man. I gotta go to work. So, uh, take it easy. Don't drink and drive, but drink responsibly. Cheers.